gonna fucking do it live! guys um obviously i i'm just completely this is mike check 95 with another mike check productions mike check movie review um <laughs> i'm with my cohorts orphan joker and Krieger and uh we are continuing our uh in-depth review series of the resident evil series and we have stepped into the territory of Resident Evil Apocalypse, which I would like to say, before we get into it, I... Krieger, do you want to go first? My question is, when are we going to watch a good movie? <laughs> we never watch a good movie. <laughs> okay, instead of, for all the people who at least watch up for like the first 30 seconds, I want to let you guys know, this movie was okay... But they put in some really dumb stuff, like absolutely, oh, just just straight stupid. I know you guys shit. don't want to talk about this movie too much, but I want to continue the in-depth discussion because this was a a personal project I wanted to do for over a year, and I know it's going to be very rough for the three of us to get through it, and also ignoring anything related to the games uh, games at all, we're just looking at it as the movie itself. First off, I would like to, I guess, bring up the fact that, did the, were they able to keep the, the continuation of the story from the first one to the second one at least decent enough? They did a shit job in the first movie, and they did such a shit job in the first movie, that they took only the important stuff out of the first movie and put it in the second movie. We watched the entire first movie in the first 30 seconds of this film. Yeah, and every character that they killed that was not important, they didn't show. But it's not that hard to connect to the story of the second one from the first one. So if the question is, did they incorporate the first story to connect it to the second one? They pretty much did what you, what, uh, you said at the, near, near the end of the review of the first one. Just show the last five minutes of the first film and then watch the second movie. Now you don't even have to do that. Zombies. Yeah. Um, okay. Zombies. And when I say zombies, I don't mean the reanimated people running around. I mean actual zombies. Um, they obviously keep the same reanimation. They have the liquors back and they have the new mutated guy in there. They talk about other mutations, how they're stable and able to connect and regenerate and blah, blah, blah. There's a scene where they're in the cemetery. <laughs> And people just shoot up out of the grave. You don't know they, how the heck they got in there. Science. Do 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 do. Spooky time with Josh. Ah! They don't tell you how they get the virus underneath the ground. Somehow they look like they haven't been down there more than five minutes, and they're able to bust out through the coffins and the dirt. I grab some late. Inter interject what dumb. what Joker dumb, dumb, dumb. interject what Joker said about the first film, saying the different borns of the film. It is right here. The virus is protein, changing from liquid to airborne to blood transmission, depending on its environment. And that is your movie explanation why they came out of the ground. It is bullshit, but that is what the movie says. Well, while, while we are um, discussing that, I thought I'd look up the financials for this movie. Please. They can't reanimate. Unfortunately, they made money on this movie somehow. Oh no, I know why. It, it, it was better than the last one. The last one made money. I don't remember looking up the financials for this movie. They and I, yeah, they made they made uh, thirty. They made a shit ton of money, and I remember okay, so their budget it. was forty five million dollars. That's, that's more than how much they made back in the first film. Uh, their box office was one hundred and thirty million. How has it made so much fucking money from that movie? What made this movie better than the last movie was graphically it was better. Yeah, it was like actual kung fu, dark themes. Uh, <clears throat> they had a couple horror movie tropes in there. You know the ah comes out of nowhere. Ah comes over here. Uh, the lighting was dark, so they it was a little more spooky, mysterious, people zombie crowds. Still did not learn how to aim, mm -hmm. and they're wasting their ammo, but they did work on the realism a little bit. When somebody was shot with a gun, they did not go flying back like they got shot by a cannon. A really weird thing. Apparently, all of the security guys had, uh, uh, laser scopes, right? The... But the two guys using the laser scopes did not use the, the two guys who extended into, well, the only umbrella guy that lasted... They had laser scopes when they pointed it at the girl, 
But they didn't use it at all when they were running around the city. Oh, yeah. It, when he jumped out of the helicopter, he didn't need to use a scope. He was just using his two truck with two fucking... Hand, his handguns, yeah. But that was kind of cool, like, super the superhuman aspect of things. It's like, dude, how is she able to do this? But then they literally, like, show it later, and it's like, ah, they explain a little bit, you know. But that's kind of cool. She's like, what the frick? How did she able to do this? This is kind of crazy. But then you realize she's been injected with a bunch of stuff. That's one thing that, because I said, like I said, I've seen this film before a lot of times, especially when I was a little kid, and that's one thing that I always forgot was that she was infected with the T-virus. And I always happen to remember the bullshit connection she had with Nemesis. Early in the movie, I noticed something small. Um, when they were showing the weather, um, that they were saying, oh, it's really getting hot out here. And then one, one town said it was 62 degrees, and then the town right next to it said 92. <laughs> which, I, I'm not a meteorologist. Despite it being cold that, outside. But I, I, don't, I don't think that's possible. I, I, I don't know. Maybe it is. Also, they said it was the coldest they've had on record. Yet the girl went out. In a tank top and a short skirt. And it was 92 degrees. And 60 degrees. <laughs> Maybe it was cold. 60 there. Because everybody else was wearing coats. Does the T-virus affect weather? Yeah, we're not going down that tangent. In the last movie, I don't know if they did it. It seemed like they didn't do it as much, but they, they didn't do it as, as scientifically as they did in this movie. But the idea that she asked the guy, how long have you been bit? The, the uh, last surviving. Oliveira. Uh, they, 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 she asked him, how long have you go where you're bit? And he said, oh, three hours. She goes, oh, it's your lucky day. That's cool because viruses take time. Same time, same thing, antidotes take time. Okay, but 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 there is also some inaccuracy compared to him, him being bit for three hours and what happened in the first movie because he was bitten three hours before Alice had found him. He got the... The antivirus, and he turned out pretty much to be fine by the end of the movie. And Michelle Rodriguez's character in the first film got bit and like within a time span of two and a half hours from her being bit and her for pretty much well, she dying. she was like majorly injured at multiple occasions. Same thing with the other guy who died. I still, I still think that's an inaccuracy when it comes to putting the, t uh, the uh, antivirus in. But it is, yeah. I don't know. Because they still haven't classified if it takes living people and kills them or if it, you have to wait till they die. Oh, and the fact that, I mean, besides Alice, who is somehow a fucking super genetic being, uh, the fact that the T-virus can mutate um, working limbs back onto a person who is, like, paralyzed from the waist down or, or has no working function of that leg. But since that's, since that, like, it's, it's... <sighs> if that works, then the, the doctor guy should have been able to walk. Yeah, because I'm just like, it... How? You could literally able to regenerate her face. I felt like they... Uh, I don't know if that's a bullshit excuse when it's actually fucking science. It, it, it just, it just, no, it that part it, confused no, no. me so it's, much. It's not science or not science. It's it's uh, almost hypocrisy that you say, well, it can give a girl her ability to walk, but not her dad. Uh, I don't even know if the dad got injected. That's the thing. That's what I'm saying is the dad should have been able to inject himself if that was the case. Another thing, I know we already like, oh, zombies in the ground. When they were in the cemetery... It says it can reanimate dead cells. It did not say it can reanimate decayed cells. There was no... They popped out of the ground because all those people would be dirt. And dirt does not get reanimated. What happened was... The, the minerals <laughs> in the dirt in the trees mixed with the uh, dead people, thus creating plant zombie hybrids. Minerals don't turn into plants. Okay, if it's able to be past airborne and waterborne... And then it does not matter how much explosionary stuff they did. If it was airborne and waterborne, and it's able to transfer not just to humans to animals, it would be in every animal, and it'd be able to get out easily and destroy the entire city. Because a nuclear blast would not kill an airborne virus. I don't think it's airborne. It's mul It's. Then how did the dad get infected? Because nothing bit him when he was on the floor, on the ground. This is what. It's not about. just airborne. It's like waterborne, okay whatever. With you, all that. We're okay with you. Reinstituting scientific information, well, but wait. you have to be consistent. The nuclear thing. It's like trying to play plague, and you're trying to win the as the virus. The nuclear thing wasn't supposed to kill the virus. The nuclear thing was supposed to kill anything that the virus might spread through. Well, that's what I'm saying. Is that would make then sense. the virus itself would just escape yes. over the wall. Mm -hmm. So bullshit. But it needs to. Sp it needs somebody to spread, right? No, it doesn't. Not if it's airborne. If it's airborne. It airborne, it means it doesn't use anything. It just floats through the air. 
Same with waterboard. It just floats through the water. Like that's that. also like I was thinking more of like Walking Dead because like that's that the the virus in Walking Dead is airborne. And like yeah, pretty much everyone's mu already infected. Pretty much. And like once you're dead, you're dead. It doesn't matter if you get shot, stabbed, bit, well, natural is causes. Yeah, but at that same but time it doesn't side make tangent. any sense. I'm harping on the cemetery scene because it was the dumbest scene. They could have totally removed it and just had people walking so... into the cemetery instead of busting out of the ground. Totally, totally stupid. My only complaint about the cemetery film, besides your guys' science and all the other stuff it's that makes science, no do, do fookery, I didn't like it for the 100 million uh, camera cuts they did. Not to mention the very ending fight scene, but we'll get to that in a second. Yeah. Do we want to move into the in-depth ridiculousity of the camera angles and stuff. It was just choppy. And was... there were some parts of it where the camera was like very shaky and slowed down yeah. as if they were trying to hide the fact that their special effects team didn't do a good job on the zombies. Yes. But it was action stuff that either zoomed out really far, which was really good, or they zoomed in way, way, way too close and you couldn't see a damn thing. Ooh. I just hated the fight scenes that were like... Repeat of the last film, they brought back the Whisper Talk. 3.1. We're, we're not done. I, I know. You're not done. I'm done. My rating is 3.1. <laughs> you have to get, you have to, you have to say it. Next. So besides bringing back the whisper talk, they also brought back the liquors. And there's more than one in this film this time. I still think the liquor is the ugliest looking CGI monster in this film. It's improved a tiny bit in this movie, but it still looks like shit. Alice's ability to communicate is completely confusing. In the very beginning, it's like, she's just regular. And then all of a sudden, it's like, now she's able to, like, sense where the liquors are somehow. And then she has a contact with this dude and then is able to telecommunicate with the girl at the end of the movie. But then she's able to, like, but she can't mind sync with, was it Max? Matt? They didn't even say his name in this movie. His either. name is Matt. See, they didn't say his name in this movie either, so how are we well, supposed they, to know what his name is? They did a couple times. So the, her abilities are confusing in this movie and I don't make confusing like they're new and interesting and cool confusing confusing like they don't match up consistently and like the only like it's it's not it's another one of those situations where like they don't explain the movie it's like one of those situations where you have to pull shit out of your ass to try to explain it and I don't want to do that again like I did with the last movie because that just makes my brain hurt even more dialogue how did the uh, dialogue it was better it was better but it was still I said the quiet spots I still, th I mean, you guys like the common air relief character, but I think he, they could have cut his parts out entirely, and the movie would have been so much better. I at know, least on they a different scale. It. Without it, it would have been flat. Because they well. didn't have a comedy character like that in the first one, and, and it was, it was so bad. At least he made it somewhat interesting, and somebody else, like, I really hope that guy lose it. I feel, like, I feel like the comedy, no, like, for, for me, though, I feel like the comedy relief, like, comedy relief, goddamn. The comedy relief pup bits, like, literally, like, there's, like, a story building, something going on, whatever, and all of a sudden... Yes, it flatlines. That was funny because no, the other thing that's is, bad in my if opinion. If they didn't have him, they, you wouldn't have understood the story. And what I mean is the idea of the kill. It's you can't be like bullshit until you hear it. If they didn't have him with all of the military guys, when you extract the military guys, you wouldn't see that the threat level. That wouldn't have been so significant. But seeing that showed when she, when Alice had a moderate level, it was like, dude, compared to the police people having, you know, like 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 a, like a minor level as opposed to him having none. That was funny, but at the same time, it, it helped you realize, oh, we got to think about this computer aspect of this guy, too. Also cool, they had Matt have the CGI, not CGI, the... The Terminator tech. vision. Yes. And so him having that aspect m made sense when later, at the very end of the movie, it has Alice had the same thing. The, the question we have is, in the next movie, is she going to be controlled like he is? Because he wasn't controlled completely. Um, all right, I want to talk about uh, the, the, the look. Movie. Watch the next movie. The look, yeah. and I guess the way the character was portrayed throughout the film. Mm -hmm. Matt, a.k.a. Nemesis. What did you guys think of him? As, as, even though he's not in the film that much, what were your thoughts on him? Cringy. Cringy, but OP. Cringy because he was walking. It, it just, he it, it was the opposite of everything they made. Everything they made was... Fast, I've, active, crazy, and he was slow. He the only tank. thing that was strong about him Tyrant was the weapons he had. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't even throw anybody or anything like that. Like he wasn't strong no, necessarily. When he went to go fight that ninja, if he would have like punched.
punched her in the rib cage. And he like just going uh, and like broke ribs or something. Uh, like, wow, that'd be cool, but it looked like he just missed a lot. I think the only thing I really want to appreciate about the Nemesis character is the fact that they didn't go the CGI route for the most part. It actually looked like a fucking suit, and it actually doesn't look completely horrible. It looks decent for the most part. Compared to the fucking liquors in the movie, that's it's just like, at least they tried to make it look decent, in my opinion. And that's why I like Nemesis in this movie. <laughs> because he actually looks decent. <laughs> That is all I got on that. I know we discussed, like, how it connects to the first one, but storytelling in this one, did they give a compelling, interesting story? I feel like at some parts they did, but at the same time they didn't. Like, like I was like I was trying to say during the movie, the movie was very up and down, and, like, I'm not saying only for the comedy bits for me, I'm just saying, like, there were random points in the film where I was like, okay, I'm, it seems a little interesting again, and then it just dips down again. Yeah, and it goes yes. back up, and it just back down. And I'm like, it's, it's weird, because... Well, they're think... trying to like tell the story about these three characters, which is crazy because like you need to care about these people. Then we'll pick them off, pick them off, pick them off. But then the last characters who has, has managed to escape in the helicopter, they're all of a sudden main characters like at the very end. It's like yeah, like I was like, and... oh, you're making this dream team, but it's just whoever survives happens to come out to be the dream team. And the other like... aspect of that that's really crazy and kind of dumb is they're also trying to tell the story of the Umbrella Company because. Are they doing this on purpose, or are they taking advantage of, of the time? What I mean is, were they strategically releasing this to the people? Which is what it looks like it was an accident. I can tell you right now. At the now. same time, it looked like it was a story. And you'll be like, I can tell you. Don't want to be told nothing of the extras. I'm the straight, just watch only the first movie. have no other background. It's like, well, they did it on purpose. But then they didn't, because why would they release the liquors? Obviously, the liquor's in a controlled environment. They obviously released the liquors on purpose. They also obviously released... If they're going to blow up the city, they wouldn't have released uh, Nemesis. I have no questions on this one. Four out of ten. I want to give it a higher review to the last movie. I'm going to give this one a 